All right, so this is a house hack. The house that I'm sitting in allowed the owner of this house to live for free. And after he left it, he ended up making money and profiting on it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and walk you on a tour of it because the owner of this house is actually selling it at the current point, making a nice, decent <laughs> chunk of change. But I wanna show you how I would house hack this particular house. Each one is a bit different. This one is a four bed, three bath house. And so therefore it's automatically more for that rooming house. I've talked about it in other videos, but you mostly want four bedrooms or more in your house hacks, even if you don't rent all of them. And so I'm gonna show you which room I would take if I was house hacking this to try to live for free, just like he did. And I'm gonna show you maybe some mistakes, things that I don't like about this house that I think maybe doesn't make it work so Just remember, a house hack does not automatically mean it's a rooming house. You can house hack a triplex, you can house hack something in Airbnb, an accessory dwelling unit. You can, a house hack just simply is you buying an investment property effectively with a primary residency loan that you know eventually down the line you're gonna turn into an investment property, right? So let's go through this whole house. First off, we have one of these rooms, and then as you can see, kind of in the distance, we have another eating area here. I think this is huge and crucial. In a lot of house hacks, you are not gonna want less than two seating areas. If you can think about it, if John and, and Sally are eating right here, and then suddenly someone else wants to come and eat, if there was only one eating area, then they would be forced to eat with that, those two. And so now we've created a second area eating area. In fact, I recommend three, usually no less. And I think that's ideal to create maximum separation. Now you may notice all this furniture in here. Remember, furniture in a house hack is not actually for those living in the house. Yes, they're gonna use it, but most of the time they end up going eating out. I remember I rent to young professionals. A lot of them are either at work, going to bars and doing their own thing. Even when they do come home, a lot of them do wanna eat in their rooms. So sometimes they will eat in these common areas, but mostly the common areas are not for those living in the house, it's for those seeing the house for the first time. You want that reaction to be solid amongst friends and family or even other prospective tenants where they walk in and they're like, this is gorgeous. So a lot of times that is what it's for. So if you see decorations like these plants or decorations like these uh, paintings here, a lot of times that is just strictly for that wow factor purpose. And that reinforces to the tenants who already exist in the house, live in the house, that they're in a house that other people like. Kind of a social proof of a sort. So let's go through this, how I would have designed it. Essentially short table, just like this, nothing wrong with that. Uh, now there is a fridge here. For four or more bedrooms, I would recommend two fridges. This fridge actually will fill up fast. If you have to think about it, um, a family is often going to be able to feed a, a family of five all on, on a single set of groceries. But if I buy a jug of milk for a family, then the whole family shares it. But in a rooming house, Everyone needs that jug of milk and everyone needs that, you know, whatever. Each thing is duplicated multiple times. Also, you have other situations. What if someone comes and brings a case of beer and decides to throw it in the fridge? Those types of situations can happen and it will take up a lot of room. Same with pizza boxes or anything of that nature. These are common household items. So what I would strongly recommend in for a house hack only, this house is being sold, so they took the other house fridge out, but I would have this fridge here and maybe another fridge probably tucked away here maybe. Uh, you can see there's an outlet here on the side. And so that's where I would put like a simple white fridge maybe. Something just kind of out of the way to allow them to have that second fridge. So let's go ahead through a lot of the rest of this. Um, they're working with the color schemes here. You can see some of this tile that I wouldn't have preferred, uh, but hey, it's a unique style. So green countertops and all that. So they made it look nice by throwing plants and such. But let's look at some of the things that, uh, logistics, okay? Number one, cabinets. Cabinets are huge. You see all these cabinets we have here? There's more over here. You want plenty of cabinets. I would say a minimum of two, three probably per tenant. So if you have four tenants in the house, you're gonna need at least 12 cabinets. And remember, you have common area supplies and stuff that are gonna take up cabinets. This house has plenty of cabinet space, so I'm not worried. Dishwashers. Dishwashers are a little bit of a tricky thing to manage in a rooming house, but usually more of your higher end houses are gonna have them, so I'm not against this whatsoever. You have your standard type of things, stove, microwave, obviously it's gonna need all that. The other things you're gonna need is um, maybe like 
Beyond a microwave, probably nothing else that you would provide. You wouldn't provide things like blenders or anything else. You wouldn't really worry about that. So that's more than enough. You just need the utensils and the basic pots and pans. I generally don't do like cookie sheets or anything out of the ordinary. So that is pretty much it with the kitchen. I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the rooms here. All right, so this is one of the smallest rooms in the house. It's actually obviously more like an office, but the owner did try to structure this room. You can see how tiny it is. I mean, I'm, <laughs> it's like a little closet. I mean, you might be able to fit a bed somewhere, hopefully. So what I would recommend if I was to get this house hack is that the owner lives in this room. You want the smallest, worst room in the house. That is ideally what you want. And the reason why is because if you think about it, you are a tax on the house. Wherever you're living, if you're living in the money makers, like the basements or the, the, the master bedrooms or anything like that, then you're taking away your largest income stream and potentially also increasing your vacancy rate. Because if I'm living in this room, how long do I live in it before I really start feeling like I want to move out of it? Probably doesn't take very long. Now, the other issue I have with this being used as a bedroom, though, is the fact that the only half bath is inside of it. I actually advised the owner against using this as a bedroom, and uh, eventually they realized they would have to kind of bail out of this house. It wasn't going to make enough money if they didn't rent this. Because not only is it tiny, but without that half bath, that means that if, let's say, one of the roommates has their parents over or something like that, they'd have to go invite them through their bedrooms, generally, to get to some of the bathrooms in the house. So, or have them use the bathrooms of other tenants if like maybe that bathroom happens to be in a hallway you generally want a half bath off to itself now this one happens to have a shower so it does give you the opportunity to do this but i wouldn't recommend it so i'm going to show you some of the other rooms in the house and why i would say definitely the owner should live in this one and keep those as the money makers so let's go to the next all right so here we are upstairs and there's actually two rooms on either side of the house this is huge uh, I generally don't like tenants being on top of each other in the sense of those brother-sister bedrooms. You, many of you know what I'm talking about. In traditional American townhomes, a lot of times you're going to see that the tenants are uh, living with a piece of drywall separating the two of them. If you can imagine for two kids, that might not be a big deal where the parents can just say, shut up. But when you have two grown adults who are bringing over significant others or playing music or whatever, that is going to be an insane problem. So here in Baltimore City Row Homes, generally the, the rooms are on the opposite side of the houses. That reduces noise and makes it a lot more enjoyable environment to live in. They can do what they want without worrying about other people hearing. Now, ducks do create a little bit of a problem with this because the duck can carry the sound. So you can block off some of the ducks, but be careful about that. Mostly because of the air pressure issues. But that's something that I do recommend. Make sure your layout is absolutely solid for a house hack situation. So now I'm going to show you this right here. If you think about it, how difficult... Now, okay. These are really old looking, all right? So these washers and dryers. But how difficult would it be to replace these? Let's say they look new, stainless steel, look really fancy. How difficult would it be to replace one of them if it broke? If you think about it, you have four tenants using these things actively. They are going to wear down, they are going to break. My recommendation, the instant you buy the house, replace these immediately with rental grade, easy to replace type of stuff. Because let's say one of these fail. If it was really expensive looking, then you would end up replacing it with something cheaper because you don't want to spend another $600 maybe or whatever on your washing machine. Well, if you do that, you're going to look much cheaper as a landlord and individual, even though really you're just trying to keep the cost of your house down, especially when, since you're living in it, you're probably not going to be profiting. So essentially... I would replace them pretty quickly if I could. Now, these are old. You might be able to get away with it. Almost anything rental grade will look kind of like this. But just keep that in mind about your appliances and what you're putting, especially moving machines, things like machines themselves that will break. Dishwashers are another common problem, but more often it's the washer and dryer. So here we actually have a hallway bathroom that could be used as a supplementary bathroom. So if we take you inside here, um, you'll see it's a pretty standard, just simple bathroom, nothing complicated about it. Um, I think overall there's nothing really to be said about the design of this particular bathroom. I mean, it's fine. It's largely tenant proof in the fact that it just has a tub surround. Nothing crazy about this thing. The only thing I would note though is that the, he's sharing this bathroom with the two bathroom, uh, the two bedrooms on this floor. 
The problem with that is there's not a lot of space here to put the toothbrushes and multiple different things. I would recommend a larger vanity in this case, probably more like a 30, 30 inch or something like that. Just bring it out a little bit more to, to allow them to store more of their stuff. The other thing is they only have one medicine cabinet in here, but otherwise than that, they just have this, which doesn't really give a lot of shelf space to, to actually you know, store things, I guess you can say. So if you have two people using this bathroom, they might be more tempted to leave all their, their stuff. Like let's say, I mean, if you think of the average person, let's say toothpaste, because you don't want to share, mouthwash, because you're not sharing, toothbrush holders, uh, razors, anything that like shavers and stuff like that. I mean, you're starting to add it up. And remember, this is not a family, which means they're not sharing. Everything is getting doubled, tripled. You have to consider those logistics with these rooming houses. So let me take you to the final room of the house and I'll show you my thoughts on that one. So going to the final room, actually, you know what? Let me show you the master real fast. This is your money maker. Do not live in the master bedroom. You don't wanna do that. I know quality of life, quality of living and all that. Remember the purpose of the house hack is to save money. You don't wanna take this room, which obviously someone can grow in, all right? Which, which I say grow in, I don't mean like grow older. I mean, as they accumulate stuff, they can keep filling their room. When they're smaller rooms, like the first one that I just showed you, you can't do that. And as soon as they get a significant other, it makes it very hard for those visits. This one, not difficult at all. I would not recommend that the owner live in this and when this is probably gonna be their most consistent income stream. All right, and also, just a quick note here. Note that the locks are actually replaced with ones with a key. And so I would recommend having keyed locks to every single individual bedroom. And then you'll see with the knob, they actually purposely didn't put something, well, this is an old door, but they, they, even if it wasn't, I would put like closet door handles on these. Or, or maybe the normal bedroom uh, door handles in order for, to allow them to lock it if they want. Um, you probably didn't need to go as far as get a, a deadbolt. <laughs> so the normal doorknobs would have been fine, but with a key. So just a little bit of a pro tip there. So now I actually will take you to the final room of the house. All right, so in the final room, we actually have a half height ceiling. You're gonna find actually, as I'm walking in it, but the ceiling starts to get increasingly low. And so you're gonna have height problems here where some of your tenants, and I've seen this happen a number of times, they're just gonna be simply too tall for the actual room. Um, but otherwise, it is a decent room. You will find a little bit of issues with these double doors. Remember that lock thing I just told you about? Well, kind of hard to do that on these ones. You might have to do like something else, but um, you could think, oh, just put a dead boulder or, you know, a little a sliding lock, but you can't do it from the outside. So it won't really work. We did come up with something that kind of locks in that fashion, but just know that these double doors can create a few issues. Um, but other than that, pretty simple bedroom. The thing is the closet's not actually in here. So someone would have to be comfortable with putting their clothes kind of outside their bedroom. Luckily, this floor has no reason for you to go up here unless you're going to this bedroom. So it wasn't an issue in this case. We also have a private bathroom for this person, and that is why you wouldn't live in it. So you, some of you might say, oh, this is one of the more worst house, uh, rooms in the house. I know we didn't see one of the rooms, but, but essentially, not really because you have a private bath. You don't want to take your private bathrooms. I know you're probably gonna think, but what about my quality of life? I've gotta live too. You're doing a house act to save money and build wealth for your real estate career. You can live for free and then use all the money you're using to live for free into something else. You want stable tenants who like staying here. Trust those arguments are gonna get sickening fast and it's just more arguments if they gotta start sharing bathrooms. That's why I recommend no more than two people share a bathroom. That's why I recommend no less than one bathroom under the number of bedrooms. So. Anyway, that's it for my tour of this particular house hack. If you're interested in more, I have more house hack videos. I talk about a lot of my different strategies and thoughts of different house hacks. So uh, let me know, comment below what type of house hacks you want to see. And I'll definitely be posting more on the channel very soon.